Now this idea of being Imam, Dr. Muzaffar, don't you have boys in your family? If they are living in your house, what you should do, what I do, I tell one son, you give Adan. The other son, I say, give a comma. The third one, I say, be our Imam. It's not enough that I, as a father, be Imam, 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 as a role model to my wife and children. I want my children to feel what does it mean to be Imam. Do you see when you give prestige to your son that he is your leader now, father, be back. <laughs> me, frontliner. I say, Allah Akbar, you follow me. You cannot supersede me. When you teach this to the children, to give them that sense of leadership in the family, means the father is not a dictatorship as we hear it. He's like one of us. When the son is going to feel giving adhan inside the house, then in the masjid he can give it easily. Many of them give adhan inside the house, but they are scared to give it in the masjid. Well, they have no courage because you did not encourage them. And in order to make your children leaders in the community, you have to test them inside the house before you give them that. Many times, people who visit us at home, we have an unwritten policy. Whoever visits us in our house, you have to be our imam. Whether you like it or not, Dr. Muzaffar, <laughs> since I know you much more than anyone else and longer and longer than I hope nobody feels bad about it. But I'm saying I can quote any number of them. I have seen people in Chicago and in LA, when they come and pray, they don't know how to read the Quran. They make mistakes in Fatiha. They, uh, they eat, eat some of it. And they don't know how many rik'ah. Is it three rik'ah maghrib or two rik'ah? Is zuhr loud or silent? Is zuhr arba'ah, four rik'ah or two? A good number of fathers. I ask myself, don't you know how to pray? Haven't you led the salat for your family? No. Somebody in Chicago, he said, never I led salat with my family and children. <gasps> what? How your children are going to be raised as Muslims in the house when you never led salat with your wife and children? How do you want your children and your wife to look at you as a role model when you are not a leader to your community, except a dictator like Saddam Hussein? The idea is that we have to be and request is to be with the children, both of you. Most of our husband, unfortunately, they don't play, they don't even be with the children. You take care of children, not me. Oh, yes, sister. Uh, how would this work for, people, for women who are working? More hours than men? Uh, my respect for sisters and husband which is more important for you, your career or your family? Yeah. So? Yeah, but in some, some circumstances, women are more educated than men. Uh, or they are more talented than men, uh, and out of necessity, they have to uh, work. Then the husband has to act also, work it as a babysitter, as a house wife, a uh, man activity, because of the situation. Suppose you accepted a man who is less uh, educated than you, and you are the professional uh, sister in the society, and you are so-called the money earning with blood and sweat. So he has to know, understand that. Therefore, he has to help you. Is it not true Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi used to help his wife? His wife Khadija brought all the money. He didn't marry her because of money, because Allah wants him to marry that girl, uh, that lady in order that she will release him from the responsibility of earning the money in order to make the da'wah. How many of us uh, sisters will tell your husband we don't need more money. We can earn still little by little. I want you to go and be da'wah. Retire from your job, Dr. Akhtar, and your wife will continue to earn the money. And you come with me and travel with me every week from state to state and from country to country in the field of da'wah. And the blessing goes to you that you allowed him to do this. But how many will do this? Khadija did it, you see? She told him, devote your time for da'wah, don't worry about money and whatnot. But he helped her inside the house. Your husband, I don't know, remember him now, but I'm saying whoever is your husband at least has to understand that he has to help you as much as you help. It's a complementary situation, financial on one side, love on the other side, house activities on the other side, children on the other side. It's a complementary activity, yes. They still want to be the dictators. Wallahi, send them to me to show them how to be slaves to you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to be the dictator. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
brother, um, there have been several um, cases that I've seen, and uh, they not only did not make money, but they uh, badly invested wives' money. Yeah. And they have um, wasted uh, some t somewhere between like two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars, and they still want to dictate women, and they think, well, you should be under their thumb. Why? Why in the world they act like this? Can do you have an answer? No, I don't. I have an answer for you. What? It's the culture. Lack of Islamic. Oh, a culture only? And or his, or his, mother, his mother did not know how to crush his ego. <laughs> Is it not true in the Muslim world? Is it not true? Take it seriously, all of us, Arabs or Indo-Pakistanis. Is it not true the girls are being crushed in the house to do all the house activity while the boys are roaming around, playing around and whatnot? Oh, that's the worst thing that the mothers have done with their boys. I mean, may Allah bless my mother. Uh, <laughs> She kept me at home, doing all the house activities like a girl. And you know, in the old country, in my age, when we are children, we have no electricity. We have no, what you call it, I mean, uh, dishwasher and laundry and uh, uh, refrigerator. We had to do all the laundry with our hand, huh? and the dishwasher with our hand, and the house cleaning everything with our hand. Even the bread, we have to take the, you know, the wheat uh, and do all the dough and then bake it in our hand. All the beds and everything we have in our hand. And we have to do everything like this, like a girl inside the house. I was number three in the, in the family. Why she didn't use the first boy or the second boy or the third boy? I mean, at the end, she had 12 children. I was number three. But Alhamdulillah, I know how to handle myself by myself. And now, Alhamdulillah, I don't brag about it. Anytime we are in the, at home, I go to the kitchen, help her, bring to the table, put the food, and then when finished, put back in the kitchen and whatnot. And I feel happy. In the masjid, I go and then clean the toilets. I don't mind. I do vacuuming. I do everything. I do it because I love Allah. I want the house of Allah to be clean, speak and span. When it is not smell, I spray it. Something of that nature. Now go to the masjid. And honest to God, you want to know whether a Muslim is clean or not in the house? Don't sit in the living room or family room. Go to the kitchen and the toilet and see whether they are clean or not. They tell you when you go to a Muslim family, don't go to the kitchen and don't go to the toilet. But if you want to allow your daughter or your son to marry from that family, go to those two places to the kitchen and to the toilet and see whether they deserve, you deserve your daughter to marry such a son from such a family. Because these are the two places of cleanliness. But in the masajid, go to the toilet. What do you do? Huh? Brother Khalil, what do you do? You take off your uh, trap up yeah. and you are afraid the najasa, najasa, unfortunately. We don't know how to do cleaning. Is it okay now? The, uh, the don'ts, same both of us.